Hey everyone, today I wanted to make a video on how to code an ADR indicator for NinjaTrader, ADR being the average daily range. And I've set it up a little differently here, so we have some steps to kind of follow along and keep us in check. I've gotten a ton of feedback from my previous coding videos that kind of helped me understand where people are getting confused. Um, so I'm just trying to make it a little more thorough this time, um, testing out some things. So let me know if you like it or not but hopefully this should be easier to follow along. This one is honestly pretty easy. There's not a lot of code involved. So I think this could serve as a good baseline for whether or not we can continue to do these types of videos or, or might need some other tools to, to help out. But in any case, we can just jump right into it. So first things first, we need to make a new indicator. So from my control center here, I'm gonna go to new and then Ninja Script editor. And from this indicators folder, I'm gonna right click and select new indicator, click next. I already have my ADR indicator made, so I'm just gonna call this ADR for YouTube. And I'm just gonna do generate since we're gonna do all the inputs and stuff ourselves. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is just define my inputs. So below the on bar update loop, I'm just gonna make a new region called properties and mark the end of that region. So I'm only gonna make two inputs here. One is gonna be the number of days that we wanna track for the ADR. And the second one is just gonna be a simple Boolean, true or false to whether or not we wanna show drawings on the chart. So to do that, it's gonna be ninja script property. This is gonna be the number of days, so it can be a value within the range of zero to the maximum integer value. It's going to display with a name of days. Just gonna put it in the first position, order one. Group name equals just parameters or something. And it's going to be an integer going to call it num days and we have to make sure we can get and set the value so we can read and write to it and I'm just going to copy this and paste it here for the boolean value and since it is not a number we can just delete this part with a range and I'm just going to call this drawings order set to two and this is going to be a public bool I'm just going to say show drawing for short so we've defined our inputs now we have to initialize all of our series lists and other values so um, when you have inputs like this and you want to set a default value, so for example, if I want my number of days to be five, then I would go to this loop here where you're setting your default values and below everything in that loop, I'm just going to set num days equal to five. Could be anything. I'm just setting it to five. And by default, I'm just going to say show drawing is going to be true. So in addition to this, I'm also going to initialize some other stuff up here. So from where it says, whatever you named your indicator, colon indicator, I'm gonna be in this loop. And for this one, I'm gonna say private series of type double. It's gonna be called highest. And I'm gonna copy and paste this and make another one called lowest. So what this is gonna do is initialize a series of double values. And this is basically like when you're doing your normal logic and you're trying to access, say the, the current bar is high. Uh, the, this keyword high is gonna access the series of data where you have values for you know each point in time. And if you would want the current bar's value, you would say zero, and that would be the zero width index of that whole series. So it's kind of like a list in a sense, but we want to declare those to track the highest high of the day and the lowest low of the day. And I'm also going to create a list of double values that I'm going to call daily ranges. So at the end of each day, I'm going to save the highest high minus the lowest low, and that's going to be our range. And I'm going to save that to our array. And then if it's greater than the number of days that we have set here, then I'm just going to remove the oldest value. And one more value, I'm just going to say private double the open. And that's just going to be my daily opening price. We don't need to set that as a, as a list or a series because it's just going to be one singular value that we only need to access and write once per day. And one last thing below where we initialize our input values, I'm going to go right below that and do add plot. So this is just going to initialize a plot for uh, what we're, we're ultimately going to do this for the highest high, the lowest low, and then the ADR high and ADR low. So I'm just going to say new stroke brushes dot blue, a width of two, plot style dot line, and this is going to be called highest. I'm just going to copy and paste that for lowest, paste it one more time for ADR high. I'm going to actually just change that color to yellow. Then I'm going to copy that and do the same thing for ADR low. And one last thing, when you're initializing stuff up here, like a list or a series, you need to just declare it in this state.configure loop. So I'm going to do highest equals new series 
of type double, parentheses this. Do the same thing for lowest, and then I'm just gonna do daily ranges equals new list of type double as we defined earlier. And that should be all good, so I'm gonna compile, make sure we don't get any errors. You can see I named that wrong right here. It's telling me lowest does not exist, so I'm just gonna double click. It brings me here, just a typing error. Change that to lowest, save, compile, and we're all good. So we can check off initialize series and lists. Now what we want to focus on is tracking the extremes, in other words, the highest high of the session and the lowest low. So again, we want to first initialize values to track the highest high and lowest low. And after that, we're just going to update the values during the session. So what I'm going to do is from this on bar update loop, I'm going to go in here and say if the current bar is less than one, so we're on the zero width bar or the very first bar of the chart, then I'm just going to declare my current the current value of the highest series that we defined to be equal to the current bar's high. And again, since this is the very first bar of the session, we're basically setting this equal to the high of the very first bar on the chart. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing for lowest, make that low and return, because that's all we wanna do. So now when we're thinking about how to actually track the highest high and the lowest low, um, it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't require a lot. So I declared it as the very first high and the very first low, respectively, for the first bar we have on our chart, because our data typically lows at the beginning of a new day. But then we also have to consider when we enter a new day, and in other words, we're at the first bar of a new session, we need to update those values accordingly and basically do the same thing here um, to make sure that we're resetting the high and low values. Otherwise, if we're at any other point during the session, we basically just need to check if we have a higher high and adjust our values accordingly for highest. And same thing for if we had a lower low. And how we would do that is say if bars dot is first bar of session, then we're going to do something else. We will do something else. So while we're here, if we are in the first bar of the session, we want to set our daily open equal to the open of that current candle. And then we're literally just gonna do the same thing here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste. So if we're on the first bar of the session, we reset our highest value to the current high and our lowest value to the current low. Otherwise, if it's any other bar besides the first bar of the session, like I said, we can check to see if the high is greater than our current highest or the low is less than our current lowest. So we can say that the current bar's highest value is gonna be equal to math.max between the highest value from one bar ago and the current bar's high. So you can imagine if we entered this loop, if we are on the very first bar of the session, we reset our values. And then right after that, we're checking the previous value that was established here against the current bar's high to see which one is greater. And if it is greater, then it's gonna pick that value. If it's less, then it's just gonna keep the old value. So same thing for lowest, except it's gonna be math.min. So we're gonna take the minimum value of lowest from one bar ago and the current candle's low. That should take care of both of these, actually. Let me just add one more to draw the highest and lowest values. And I'm trying to include these steps because I noticed a lot of people um, get lost in some of the longer tutorials, which is totally understandable, um, especially if you're not compiling very often. It can be hard to catch mistakes. But if you're consciously going and validating that, you know, stuff is showing up on your chart, whether you're just drawing an arrow at an entry condition or plotting a line of some value that you're expecting, that can help just to confirm that you're doing everything right. So, so outside of this loop, I'm gonna make a new one. So I'm gonna say, if show drawing is enabled, then we're basically just gonna set the plot values for our highest and lowest. So how we access this is from going to this keyword values. So when we're actually accessing and setting these values for the plots, you can access them accordingly here, where you could say value zero, and that would give you the series for highest. Values one would give you lowest, and so on, depending on the order that you have them. It's just gonna be from zero onward. I'm just gonna comment that out so it doesn't affect anything. But if we go back to if show drawing, then we're just gonna say values zero, so that's gonna be our highest. And again, this is a series, so we wanna access the zero with element of that series and set it to the current value of highest. I'm going to do same thing for lowest. So values one accessing the zero with element is equal to lowest from the zero with element. So I'm going to save and compile. Now I'm going to go to my chart. Now I'm going to go to my chart here, right click indicators. I'm going to ADR for YouTube panel. I'm going to set this to same as input series. Otherwise it's going to plot it below everything. Click apply. And you can see we are plotting our highest high and lowest low of the day. 
and confirm that it gets a reset on each new day. So you can see where it starts, the highs being updated, the lows being updated. And then when a new day forms, it snaps back to the first candle, expands accordingly, resets, and so on. So we can confirm that that is working and done. Now we can actually go on to calculating the ADR. So what I'm gonna do first is go into this loop if we are in the first bar of the session. And I'm gonna put all this above what we already wrote and you'll see why in a second. But basically I'm gonna do a quick check to see if current bar is greater than one. Reason being this is where we're gonna save uh, the highest high minus the lowest low, other, in other words, the daily range. And so we just wanna make sure that when the script is being initialized and it's you know calculating on the very first bar, we're gonna be entering this loop, but we won't have actually saved the current day's highest high and lowest low yet because we're still on the very first bar that the chart can possibly access. So I'm just checking to make sure that we are past that value. So first we just wanna calculate the actual range from the highest high to the lowest low, and that's gonna be double range is equal to highest from one bar ago minus lowest from one bar ago. And again, because we are on the first bar of the session, that means the last bar of the previous session occurred one bar ago, which is why we're accessing the values from the first index instead of the zeroth one. Now we wanna add this range value to our list of daily ranges. So we're gonna do daily ranges dot add range. And then we have to check to make sure that after we have say five days or whatever our period is set to, that it's removing the last value. So when, when we're adding to this list, everything is being appended at the end. So we can just remove the zero width index. So we can say if daily ranges dot count to get the size of the list is greater than num days, then we're just gonna do daily ranges dot remove at, and again, we're gonna pick the zero width index. And also just to show visually where we're starting a new day, we can do this if show drawing and then draw dot vertical line, this comma session start line plus current bar it's gonna be at the current index and I'm just gonna do brushes.yellow. So if I save and compile, then I go back to my chart, go to indicators, I'm gonna add the new version, make sure it's on the same panel as the input series, click apply, and we can see those vertical lines denoting the first bar of each session. So we have saved the daily ranges, we can check that off. Now we need to find out how to take the average and plot at the new days open. So what I'm gonna do here is go below this last if show drawing loop, so now I'm just gonna check if our daily ranges dot counts, in other words, the size of the list that we're dealing with is equal to number of days that we specified, in this case five. And if it is, then we're gonna be setting the ADR high and ADR low values. So we're gonna be accessing them like this. Again, because of the order we listed them here, each add plot is basically initiating a new series of values. So the first plot is value zero, values one, values two, and so on. And since we have ADR hide right here as the third element, that would be values two, ADR low will be values three. And each one of those is a series, which is why we're saying values two and then zero, because we want to be setting the zero with element or the current in the index. So this is going to be equal to the daily open plus our daily ranges dot average divided by two. And we're gonna be doing the same thing for the ADR low, except it's gonna be daily open minus this value. Reason being, if we have a daily range of 100 points, and we would be looking at the daily open and setting our ADR high at 50 points above the daily open and our ADR low at 50 points below the daily open. So now that we have this, we can save and compile. I'm gonna remove the old one, add the new one, make sure it's on the same panel, click apply. And now we have everything all done. So these, horizontal yellow lines, upper and lower, are the ADR high and ADR low. And you can see we didn't have those here because we didn't have enough information to calculate our ADR, given that our input value, if we go to our indicators, is set to five for the number of days. So we need five days worth of data of daily ranges to be able to calculate the ADR. So we have one, two, three, four, five sessions here. Now we have enough data to plot the ADR high and ADR low accordingly. And one last thing here is I just wanna add this little text note in the top right that tells us uh, the current day's high, the current day's low, what our current ADR is, and, and also how much we've traded in the current day relative to that ADR. So below where we just were, I'm just gonna define this double average range. So it's gonna be equal to basically the same thing we calculated here of the daily ranges dot average. But because we're not in a loop checking for how many values are in there, we need to make sure that we have the required number of values. 
So we're just going to do pretty much an inline if statement by saying if daily ranges dot count is equal to number of days. And that kind of if statement is declared by this little question mark at the end. If that's true, then we're going to set that to daily ranges dot average. Otherwise, the value is just going to be zero. So this is our if condition. If that's true, then we return this. Otherwise, we return this after the colon. Then I'm also going to do double current. So this is going to be how much we've traded relative to that ADR range. So I'm just going to do math.round. And I'm going to take our current highest and lowest values, the difference between them, and divide that by our average range. And I'm going to display this as a percentage. So I'm going to multiply that by 100, round it to the nearest tenth place. Forgot a parenthesis after the round. Now I'm going to make this string text is equal to, and I'm going to say what our current high is. So I'm going to say current high plus, and we're going to convert to string our highest of the current index. And just to see what that looks like, we're just going to plot this on the chart as is. So I'm going to do draw dot text fixed this highest lowest. I'm just going to say text note. We'll put our string text in there, text position dot top right of the chart. So I'm going to save and compile. Now, if I go to my chart, remove the old one and the new one, same panel. Now you can see in the top right, it's showing our current high, which is tracked by the blue line here, 2771.75. So I'm basically just going to do that for our current low um, and also our ADR and how much we've traded relative to that ADR. So below string text, I'm just going to add to it and say text plus equals. We'll do a new line and do current low. And we're going to use convert to string of our current lowest value of the session. So now I was going to say our current high is this, our current low is that. And I want to add our current ADR value. So new line ADR. Uh, and we can show what the period is here from the input by doing convert to string number of days, add a closing parenthesis for the text. And now we can just add our value with convert to string of that current variable that we defined a couple lines up with a percent sign. So now I'm just going to add our current days ADR value so we can do a new line ADR parentheses. And we can just display um, our number of days that we defined as an input parameter by doing convert to string our num days, add a closing parentheses to that, and then just doing convert to string our average range that we defined previously. And then lastly, right after that, just going to add how much we've traded relative to that ADR range. So we can say new line today, convert to string. So we're getting our current daily range from the highest to the lowest value. And we can show that percent we calculated by doing convert dot to string current for that value we declared a couple lines above and just add a little percent symbol with closing parentheses. So I'm going to save compile once more. I'm going to remove the old indicator add the new one, same panel, apply. And there you go. So we got current high 27.71.75, current low 26.16. That's correct. Our current ADR from a period of five days is about 203, 204 points. And today you can see we've traded only about 156 points, which is about 76% of that ADR range. So I think we can check that off and say that we're pretty much done. And just so you guys know, everything in this video was pretty much inspired by my friend Retail Capital on Twitter. He recently kind of ditched social media, but I love everything he's put out. He's had a, a huge impact on me as a trader. He uses ADR and uh, statistics in, in a bunch of different ways for his framework. Just wanted to make that known to, to understand where all this stuff is coming from. But yeah, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys like this video. Let me know what you think of this kind of bootleg notion tracking to, to show our progress. I hope it was helpful in some capacity just to make sure you don't get too lost. I'm down to, to try new things to make sure that the videos are still engaging and educational and um, and are uh, as value as can be for people who haven't really coded too much. But yeah, if you like this video, please feel free to give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you want more of this stuff and I'll see you next time.